Don't worry, everybody. Everything is good in life once again. The Llama Vader 2.0 is now ready for business. Life will continue. We can all sleep easy. It's amazing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh huh. It's like a typewriter. Uh huh. I had a, a little surprise here. I'm going to show you guys it in case you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but I want to test it out with a couple other types of dirt blocks here, too. Uh, so, how are you guys doing today? Hopefully, you're having a wonderful day today. Uh, last episode in the Let's Play series, we mostly just checked out how the 1.13 updates can affect our, our Let's Play world, right? Uh, and today, what I want to do is actually have some fun with it. We're going to check out the new features a bit more. Um, maybe plan out some ideas for our, our underwater base here and just kind of have fun trying out the new, the new uh, not snapshot, release. Uh -huh. So I got a big surprise. I grew a spruce tree here. Let's try it out maybe with just a single one first off because I don't know if that, if that does it. No, so it's got to be the double talls, right? Double talls. All right, here we go, guys. Are you ready for this? Have you seen this? Bam! <laughs> so the the double tall or uh, two by two spruce trees change the ground to uh, Podzil now. It looks like it changed the dirt, the grass, but not the farmland, not the not the path blocks, and probably not the mycelium either. Right? Let's try over here again. Yeah, not the mycelium either. That's that's pretty interesting. That means Podzil is a renewable resource now. And if you want to make like a mega taiga biome anywhere, it's really easy because you just got to grow a few trees here and there, right? And it'll change out most of the grounds. Yeah, so it's grass, dirt, and I guess coarse dirt too because it got switched over there. Uh-huh. And it's only one thick too. Yeah, so I've been getting a lot of really cool surprises playing the update here because usually when a new update comes out, I've played all the snapshots in the Let's Play world for months, and I've seen all the change logs. Uh, we couldn't really play the snapshots with this update, so I just kind of skipped it, and I skipped, uh, I think, quite a few of the change logs, because I'm, I'm finding all kinds of surprises here. Uh, this is another one. Apparently, there is a new block in the game. Kind of. <laughs> the pumpkins! The pumpkins change, guys. So, what's special about them, you might ask? Well, we're going to find out. You can probably tell already. So the old pumpkins always had the faces, but the new ones, they don't have faces on. Which is kind of cool, right? Because a lot of people didn't like that you couldn't choose. Um, oh, you can place them in mid-air. Has that always been a thing? Because I, I know that was a problem for a long time. Okay, so I just checked out the wiki page on it, and apparently the placing in mid-air just happened in this update. Because I know from experience placing these ones, I had to put a block underneath each of them and then remove it uh, when I made this tunnel a long time ago. I used to use pumpkins a lot for lighting before, uh, like, villagers traded glowstone and stuff. Uh-huh, so that's pretty cool. Got a couple things here we could try out with this. So, yeah, you can place them in midair. Uh, the wiki page said if you want to get the carved pumpkins, apparently you just use shears on them. And it gives you seeds. Can you double shear? Probably not, right? That would be crazy. No, just one. Get like two faces on it. Nope. Uh-huh. And I grab some snow here. See if we can use these pumpkins. Nope. So we got to use the carved ones then. All right? Aha. Uh -huh. Um if we shear this guy, you have which which face do you have? Okay, you have the pumpkin face. If we shear him, he doesn't drop the pumpkin. I think he's supposed to, right? What if I shear you now? Nothing else happens. Okay, can I put a pumpkin on you? No. <laughs> hey, he's pushing me. He's pushing me around. Get out of here. Interesting. Okay, I got some iron as well for iron golems. Let's see if it's any different. And nope, can't use that as expected. So it's got to be these ones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, we got an achievement. Or advancement, whatever. I, I'm going to say achievements forever, I think. 
I'll never change. And I want to try it with dispensers too because you can equip uh, you can equip pumpkins on your head before with the face ones. See if you can do it with the faceless ones. So take off the helmet. Let's try it with the face one. Yeah. <laughs> let's try faceless. No. Okay. So they are they're quite different then. Aha, another pretty relevant thing here. You can make the jack-o'-lanterns with the carved ones, but obviously not with the, the regular ones. Got another surprise here. They are just everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> uh, apparently, you get the snow slabs now if I think you have a silk touch shovel. And I checked the wiki page on this and it didn't have anything about it, so I think this is a pretty obscure uh, change. Oh, the redstone guys. Redstone is super laggy in this update for some reason. You might see some frame droppage in this episode, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, let's go over here. Because we tried this, I think, uh, last episode with just a regular shovel. And we get the snowballs, but Silk Touch is the slabs. Oh, and they did a good job on it too. It depends on how many are in the, in the block here. So I think this one's six. You break it, you get six back. Oh, maybe it was five. Yeah, five. This is six. We got 11 now, and this one's seven, so we should have 18. Yeah. All right, everybody. So I thought next up here we would check out the water mechanics in a bit more detail, because I know some of you that watch me don't play the game anymore, right? <laughs> and uh, it would be good if you guys know how it works, so that when we do stuff with it in the future, it's not like, well, why is it doing that, you know? Um, also, I think there's a lot of confusion about the way the water works because of maybe some of the snapshots that worked differently before. Like when I was building the ice farm, a lot of you said that the water was going to pass through the trap doors, which I don't think is right, right? We'll find out here. Let's let's try some stuff out. So as, as we saw before, items float in water now, so they don't drag along the bottom. That's kind of key. Uh, if we place like a ladder here... Yeah, so you can still have blocks like this with air spaces, right? But if you want to turn them into water blocks... Actually, ladders might not be one of them. Oh, no, they are. They are. You, you place the water bucket in it. Right? So that's, that's a really cool way of doing it. You can have it both ways that way. This is good for me, too, though, because I, I don't know how the water works either. <laughs> Uh, I saw a lot of like Reddit posts about it, and I think some of those some of those things don't work anymore. Like that worked in the snapshots. So I guess the way it works is if you have a water source block, and you place a block that can be waterlogged in it, like a trap door, it automatically gets waterlogged. Same with the ladder. Same with stairs. Same with slabs. So that's good. If you're building underwater, like an underwater base, you don't have to place a water bucket into the block every single time you do it, right? Also, so like flowing water doesn't go into a water loggable block like this, right? Uh, but if a situation arises where a water source would be created in it, like that, then it then it'll spread there, which is kind of interesting. So in our case with like the the ice farm, we have a row of trap doors kind of like this, right? And oh, let's grab some water here. I should have set this up earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have like water sources all along one side here, right? They won't spread to the trap doors until we place it here, because then a water source block can be created here, because we got one there and one here, and then one can be made here, and it makes a chain reaction. Chain reactions do occur within waterlogged blocks. So that's kind of key as well. Um, before in the snapshots, you could you could actually move water in waterlogged blocks. Like if you had water in a slab like this and you moved it upwards, then it would, it would spread out on the ground here, right? But I guess they changed it so um, it just gets deleted, the water. Same with over here. You could hide water like behind a wall before and then move it but now the water just disappears. One thing that's really nice is no matter how high above the, the hopper an entity is, it always gets picked up by the, the hopper below here, which is really cool. 
So you don't have to worry about items flowing over hoppers in, in water streams. And another thing I noticed here, this is something I would like to change, is if you try to place a water bucket in a waterlogged block. Oh, it worked. <laughs> Doesn't work with all of them. That's interesting. Wait a minute, what? So I, I didn't work with trapdoors, right? No, I can't place this down. You hear my you hear my right mouse button clicking like crazy there? Can't place it there. Can't place it there. You can place it in in ladders for some reason though. Huh. Oh man, I am so crushed right now. I thought I thought for sure this was a feature. I saw on the Reddit people were placing rails underwater and like making underwater minecart systems. But I don't know if it was in the snapshots. I saw on the wiki page just now that it's a feature in the Bedrock edition of the game. So hopefully it comes out uh, in the Java version, because I think that would be really cool. I wanted to use that at, at our underwater base, but I uh, guess it's not a thing. You know, it might be okay, actually. We're going we're gonna to try it out here underwater. Uh, but also notice this, I guess because my world was made before 1.13, None of the water got updated to the new light level, so anytime I place like a block underwater, it updates. <laughs> Man, I hate it when I say things and then they don't come true. Maybe I gotta have a, a block with light lighting in, actually. How does that work? Oh, that, now it did it. So if there's lighting nearby and then I place a block, it updates. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to try to get the, the minecarts working underwater here still. Uh, it should be pretty good. As long as our head's above, or in the water, it'll be cool, right? So I think what we got to do is just have like a row of, of trap doors or something. Which, by the way, we have new trap doors, all six wood colors. I really like that. Spruce ones, I think, are everybody's favorites. Very good for building. So now that we, d we did that... These are these trap doors are waterlogged, right? Oh yeah, the the blocks aren't floating, so we're we're standing in air right now. That's good. That's what I want. And then I think you just got to put the rails down here. <laughs> uh, why did that work? Shouldn't it be air underneath here? Because I I placed the trap doors first, and then I mined it out. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I thought I tried this and it didn't work. So I guess this is another really important thing. If you have a waterlogged block, it will spread the flowing water out of it. For some reason, I thought that wasn't true. <laughs> uh, here, let's... So that's what's happening. Because it's flowing downwards, I'm pretty sure there's water down here, right? Yeah. So it flows underneath it, too. So those items weren't floating because there was a downward current. I think this is worth worth noting as well. So if we throw an item in the water, of course it floats, right? If we have a downward current, it sinks. It doesn't try to float. And even if we just like gradually, very slightly toss it in the water like that, it'll go down. Always, right? Uh, but if we slide it in like this, then it'll float. So just that little that little oomph of entering the water is enough to drag it under one source block here. Aha. Uh -huh. Anyways, I want I want underwater minecarts, guys. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get them. I'm trying with ice now just to see if we can cheese the effect, right? Uh, of course, this is really cool too. We can sprint underwater, and if we do, we start swimming, right? I look pretty cool. Zoom. Oh, here's... Oh, you can't catch me. I'm too fast. Aha. Uh -huh. Anyways. Oh, I'm, I'm using a shovel. <laughs> Knockback works underwater, too. That's that's cool. So we can swim into, like, one one tall spaces here, like we do with the, the elytra wings, right? Can we do that without... Seems like we stay we stay in the crawling mode. Let's let's try it without because I actually haven't seen that. So if we, oh yeah, so we don't need elytra wings to get into one tall spaces anymore. And then once once we're in that one tall space, we stay in it. 
Aha. Uh -huh. So what I want to try, let's just block this up, is see if we can cheese the effect, make it feel like we're underwater even though we're not technically. Oh, I guess that doesn't work because I'm... I gotta enter this while not sw not swimming. Why does ice hurt you now? Hmm. Oh, the lightning disappeared. Now that it's nighttime. Oh. You're not gonna drown, are you? You cheated the system. Oh, he did. He did. Okay. Uh, it takes him a second to find me again afterwards. And he kept the armor, too. That's interesting. They do a thing. Yeah, look at that. So they change from the desert zombies to regular zombies. With a loud noise. And then they change to the drowned zombies after that. It, like, resets, I think, their air, too. <laughs> you're coming You're coming under with me. Come on. Come on. Oh, he ejected! He ejected off the chicken when I tried to pull him under. Aw. Okay, I guess that doesn't work, then. Hey, he's fine. He's perfectly fine. But then if I remove this, yeah, they do burn in the they do burn in the daylight and they go right for the water. Huh. So even if he's in the shade, he'll prioritize going to the water first, even if he burns. Oh yeah, so it's a little bit strange to get it set up, but I did get it working here. So we got waterlogged trap doors above us. You see they're dripping down and stuff. Uh, for the very first time in Survival Minecraft, we can have kind of underwater rails. Where our head's actually in the water. So this is the view. <laughs> it's a, a little close to the ground. It would be nice if we were up a block higher. Yes, yes. But this is as good as we're going to get it, I think. Uh-huh. That is kind of cool, right? I think I might, I might use it at the base still. Uh-huh. So let's go, let's go over here and try some things out. So trapdoors, they have a special ability, I believe, where the water will flow down when it's open and then it stops when it's closed, right? I tried some stuff with sponges too, just to see if we could like break the system or something. So if we place a sponge here, it doesn't quite reach all the way to the top. If we place it one block higher, it absorbs the whole thing. So sponges will pull the water out of uh, waterlogged blocks too. So we get ourselves a trapdoor with water in it, right? Then we put the lily pad on top and a piece of sand on top of that. And we're going to absorb the water with a sponge. What's going to happen to the lily pad? What's going to happen to the sand? Do you guys know? Here we go. Huh? So lily pad pops off, it doesn't disappear, and the sand doesn't float, it actually falls. <laughs> Where do you think that slime came from? <laughs> it's just a little baby slime cube drifting across the water here. Okay, and a creeper apparently too. <laughs> uh, I'm at like a chunk corrupted area here. I guess they're coming out of the caves. <laughs> what a bully, man. He pushed me into the water. Uh huh. So I think, guys, for the next episode, the plan is we're going to go look for the new ocean biomes and try to figure out where we're going to set up our base, right? Um, and look for the, the nice corals and the nice water. Right now we're in the swamp here. <laughs> um, I'll tell you kind of my rough idea for the base, though, like what I plan on doing. So I don't want to just build a room underwater. What I actually want to do is live under the water, right? So, and we'll probably have some some rooms underwater with airs, air spaces in and that kind of stuff too. Because we can't grow like wheat underwater, for example. 
we'll need to build rooms for certain things. But as much as possible, we're going to try actually live where we're drowning, right? Um, so, of course, we got to contend with the, the air bubble situation. I'm sure there's lots of ways around that, though. Uh, I think sugar cane is not waterloggable right now, so you can still do this trick. Right? Um, I think also, I would like to play with the air bubble stuff a bit too today if we have time. We're running a little bit low on time. But I think these refill your air bubbles too, right? Yeah, they do, they do. Okay. So you could have... They're really cool too, by the way. I think this is the coolest thing added in the patch. Because <laughs> uh, obviously you make elevators and all kinds of cool stuff with them. But you can have stations like this where you refill too, right? That works out. Or, or we could just have a downward current probably, right? I guess it hurts you though. Uh huh. So soul sand makes you go up and the magma makes you go down. Is the way this works. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> it shoots you with a lot of force. Like you actually hop out of the water uh, when it when it shoots you out. So like if we're gonna live underwater, um, we're gonna try to adapt to living underwater as much as possible, right? And that includes things like our animal farms. If we're living underwater, the sheep have to live underwater too, right? So I want to try something here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to drown this guy, but I want to try to keep him alive. So I think... Oh, there's a dolphin here. I think if we do something like this, hopefully he gets air from the, the bubble stream. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Well, let's attach a fence to this. Is that going to kill the bubble stream? Let, let, let's make sure he gets some air here before we kill him. I kind of want to, like, hold the guys down. Maybe. Like that. <laughs> and try try give him air. But it's probably something I'm going to have to play around with. Let's see how long he'll stay like that without dying. And yeah, maybe we have, like... a like redstone controls for turning the air on and off every so often so they don't drown. But I'm not sure. I think leads might still break off, right? Like when you leave the chunks. He seems okay though. Like uh, this might work. I think he should be dead by now if he didn't have the bubble streams. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to have to play around with it. I think it could be a lot of fun though. Yeah, he's hanging in there. I think it's good. I think it's it's a good idea. So that's how you can do like underwater animal farms and just have like two of them side by side. You can breed them and then the baby one will probably float to the surface and you can, like if it's cows, you can send it to a, a killing room or something, right? And, and just keep the parents. But uh, anyways, guys, I think we'll wrap up here actually. Uh, we'll play around with this stuff more in the next episode, I am sure. Uh, I've been doing a lot of long videos lately, like 30, 40 minutes. I I think it's better I do like 20 to 30 minute videos though. <laughs> so I got to get back into that habit and just make more of them. I think this is a better way of doing it. So here's the comment of the day. It says, are you going to be playing on Hermitcraft? So Hermitcraft Season 6 just started, guys. I am a hermit, kind of an inactive one. Uh, but I do play with some of the hermits in Foolcrafts. Uh, here's the thing about this. I thought I'd mention it because a lot of people are wondering this. Um, if it was just me, if it was up to me, I probably would. Uh, usually my attitude has always been like, if I think I'll have fun doing something, I'll do it. Do it for as long as I want, as long as, long as I'm having fun, and then stop when I, when I'm not. <laughs> um, but I have noticed a trend in the comments, um... And it's not just one person, it is a few people, which mean there's, means there's probably some truth behind it, right? Um, a lot of times when a series ends, I don't actually announce it ends. I just stop playing because 
you know, I don't plan to end the series. It just kind of happens, right? And I did that pretty badly with the Hermitcraft series. Like, I think I played three seasons of it, and none of them got beyond 30 episodes. Um, and as a result, I've gotten a reputation now where I end series all the time. Like, even when I played Foolcraft, when I started that up, most of the comments were like, uh, well, not most, but some were like, well, I can't wait till this ends on episode three. <laughs> and it's just, it's really discouraging to see that kind of stuff, right? So I'm kind of feeling like maybe I shouldn't do something if I know I can't commit to it. Um, and Hermitcraft's one of those things where I, I could have some fun playing it for a while, but I doubt I'll get beyond episode 50, right? Because um, there's more support for the LP series here than the Hermitcraft one always. And I have always had trouble like playing two vanilla series, even like with Minecraft, it was it was a struggle always. So I don't know. I don't know what to do, guys, honestly. Um Yeah. The thing is, keep this in mind, like just about every series I do doesn't have an official ending, so I do have to end them eventually, right? Um the one time I did announce that a series was ending was I think I think with the crack pack and I got a lot of flack for that episode like the final episode so it's like it's bad if I do tell you and it's bad if I don't tell you so I just <laughs> I don't know what to do <laughs> it's it's just bad yeah anyways that's that's my thoughts on the matter I don't know if I'm playing or not um so yeah there there we go Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Thank you for watching, as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.